What's up, y'all? It's Chris. You're here with one of the hottest young producers in the game today. Yeah. It's the June James. What are you yes, doing? Do? What's going, bro? Pleasure. Thank pleasure, you for bro. taking the time out. Man, thanks for having me. Chat with us today. Mm. Um, so I kind of just want to um, dive dive right into it. Um, I kind of want to start with a little, uh, a little background. Um, how how long after you started um, did you know that that this was for you? Like, how did you? When did you know that you were a June James June? Oh uh, well, my name my name June James off rip, so it's God given. So off the top, I knew. I mean, I knew I was June James. So that ain't nothing. But like, as far as music goes, and I've been on what I wanted to do since middle school. So okay. I was 12, 13, 14 years old. So you know, it's just something I've been wanting to do, and I know I was gonna do it. So it's always been like that. Um, er, early on, um, you I'm, I'm from the Dallas area, right? Yeah, so I grew so, up. Okay. I, so I grew Shout up listening, listening. Yes, indeed, DFW. listening. I, I, I listening to Young Nation. Oh yeah, that's my people. So yes, indeed. So so when I found out that you were like the the mastermind behind Pimp. Yeah, for which sure. Was one of my songs I listened made to. Made Pimp so fast too. Yeah. Um, tell us about that experience okay. and, how, and how Pimp. Well, Pimp, how well, Pimp came we, about. We was um, we was already we was doing that doing our thing with the college stuff and they was doing that thing to me and Aloe. You know, and BZ and Red P, we had sweat about we killing going. So we just was always, you know, seeing each other at parties and in clubs and stuff. So um, I remember he came in town to, you know, fool around with Aloe after a college party, I think, and I was there too. And he just came out of the studio. They actually called us by the hotel. I made a beat in like five minutes. I didn't even need to put that much effort to it, just like I did, like Sweat about killing. It was just mm -hmm. a club track, just some simple stuff, you know, just make sure it rocked. And then it just hopped on and it was just like, it just became what it was, you know. Right. Overnight, the thing just went crazy. Right. Went viral and crazy, so and that was just the energy. The energy was there, and we didn't know we had a banger. Yeah. We just knew it was a jamming yeah. song. We didn't know it was gonna go crazy like it went. Yeah, um, <laughs> is that is that experience with with Young Nation? Um, can you um use that as 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 kind of like um, the the starting point for you? Like, is that where it all took off for you? Uh, I mean, your, it was to, to me. It was it was already starting before that. I think that was just something that just happened on along the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, we had our stuff going on. Like, like I said, Swaggy Baby Killing was doing this thing in Houston already, and we was popping and bubbling what we had going on. But like, you know, it was it was it was definitely it, it was fuel to the fire. You know, we had did the Romeo for Fat Pimp too that was going crazy. So we had a lot of records at the time. So it was just it was just like I said, just more fuel to the fire. Um, also, also during that time, uh, I came. I, I moved to Houston in 2011. When I moved here, turn on 97.9. Yeah. You guys, you right, you guys were always yeah, on always on the radio here. Yeah. Um, what was it like? Turn. I mean, because you're from Houston. Yeah. For so, sure. so what was it like? Turn on the radio and listening. Man, that, that was having every other song. Being, that was, when I when I first got my first song on the radio, that was like so it was really sublime. Like going like 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 you know restaurants or going to like just any public place and you hear people singing the song that you made right. and show in your bedroom six seven months ago. So it's just it was, it was, it was mind blowing. I, was, I remember being at CVS and mom was in line, you know, with a baby, singing the song to her. I'm like, oh, shit, that shit was real loud. I was like, that shit was really dope. So it was a really good feeling. After a while, you know, so I got started getting used to it. But you know, the first feeling was, you know, it ain't nothing like the first feeling. Yeah. That and like, you know, that and then we had the key to the streets and that went national. That was a good feeling yeah. too, because that's my first national record. That compared to to working with some of the Houston legends like you know, Paul Wall and you know, like, uh, like. Speak to working with some of the people that you you got to work with that you grew up listening no, to. Paul Wall, like Paul Wall, and something like you know I'm from the North Side, so like them two people like mainly Michael Watts too. When Michael Watts yeah. reached out to me, that was a really that was a real big deal to me. You know what I'm saying? Like because like those people I really grew up on, like mm -hmm. those three people like really like a big influence on me as far as the North Side culture goes. So like I said, like working with Paul was like just a dope experience because like. It went from being something I didn't think it was gonna be like just more than like a work with us. We really like partners. Like that's really my partner. He called, check on me on the family, my son, and it's the same thing with me. I could check on his kids. It be just general love. Like I remember I got off probation. You know what I'm saying? He picked me up. You know, with his Chris right his crew, he spoke me out. You know what I'm saying? It was just love. You know what I'm saying? So Paul a good dude, slim thug, good to good dude too. I remember he had sent me down. And it's Bentley one time just gave me like an hour and a half long talk because he knew I was getting into trouble. And she was like, man, I need to focus on this, focus on that. Give me a lot of game and just put me in, you know, in a in the right state of mind is to get to where I'm at right now. So them two dudes, like I said, along with Michael Watts. Michael Watts used to sit down and just do mixtapes for me for free, just out of love, just off me being from the north side, and they just supporting my movement. So like I said, them dudes always had a, a good, like, you know, good hand in what I had going on. You know, they always supported and they, you know, what I'm saying Southside dudes, too, Southside legends, too, like Lil Kiki. You know, what I'm saying Lil Flip. You know, you know, what I'm saying people like that. They look out for me too. You know, what I'm saying a lot of people look out for me. So out outside of of those, because because you've worked with the likes of some of. The best artists out there now. Who is one of your favorite artists to work with? Or my favorite, that you work with in the past? favorite artist to work with right now is my artist Magic. You know what I'm saying? That's my exactly. artist Magic. You know what I'm saying? Tell us about Magic. You know what I'm saying? He's the young man behind me right there. He gonna bless you. He gonna, he gonna turn purple on the camera. So we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> but no, that's really on 
I'm focused on working with him right now. You know, I like working with Lucy, of course. That's always fun, you know what I'm saying? Houston wise, I like working with BZ, you know what I'm saying? The most, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, my, I got my artist magic too. I like working with everybody, you know, I vibe with everybody for the most part. So I really don't got my favorites right now. Um, can can you speak to that for me? Because cause coming up when you had the the LAD DJs. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, oh, you know your shit. Yeah, yes you know indeed. Everything. Yes indeed. Yeah, <laughs> yes indeed. Really nice. um, hands on with all the way in with it or, or your Nah, I've really been stepped away from that a long time ago. I'm still affiliated and I still fool around with all the DJs and still love and respect because you know who was one of the founders of it and one of the orchestrators for it for sure. But I've just been doing my own thing. I'm really focused on production and just like I said, building my own brand. Because that was more so a group thing with me, Alo, Femo, E-Man and stuff like that. But like I said, we all doing individual things. Like Alo, you running right now. Femo focused on school and saying that we E-Man. So it was just something that just really outgrew itself. I think that we, we did a lot of mistakes. Like I said, we learned from the situation. And individually, I think we grew from that situation, you know, you know, in different ways. But um, now I feel like with that situation, I think we just added too many people to me for too fast. Yeah. Yeah. The group got too big, too fast. It was too popular, too fast. And it was, it was, it was it, like, like you know, and we young too. We never had, we never like had somebody to just come in there and just structure and make it make sense. Yeah. It was just always just wild. Like if we would have had Kelsey back then. We would have been, we would been. I was, straight. Really, I was gonna ask. So we never had yeah. nobody like that. It was always like. Just I'll be the one best in the situation. And I'm and like compared to her, I ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? And so just imagine me versus that shit. You know, and like I just be honest with me, Allo Queen, the best decision time makers. James and best time management maker. So it's just it was bad. But we learned a lot of this shit. You know, it was it was good times though. Yeah. It was great times really, but it was hard times too. Like a motherfucker, it was bad times, it was trying times. But it was successful times was though successful. for sure. And we, like I said, it was, it was some, we made history. But I've been knowing we made a little history. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just feel like we could have done something better. I just feel feeling like sometimes I feel like we can get back together and make some shit shape. But you know, shit. Yeah. The shift of music in Houston. Man, shit that, changed so fast. Like, can you speak to that and your opinion on it? I mean, I feel like, you know, like I said, I be saying this all the time, like, music like fashion, so just shit changed up every two years, every one, you know, one year, two years, three years, shit changed up. So, I mean, like, watching the shit go from, like, boogie to, yeah. like, niggas sauce. When we was running stuff, it was more clubby. It was more like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's one thing I respect about Sauce, they had their own wave. You know what I'm saying? They had their own, it was something like, just like us, though, we had our own thing. And anytime you have your own shit, whether it's the DJ Coalition or just, or a group of rap artists, like what they was, it was a group of rap artists from all different sides of town and they got together. It was like some SUC type shit. And then they had like, they had a DJ too. So shit just all worked, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's it a lot of shit that, that was there that people don't know. They don't understand how shit goes, you know what I'm saying? People, motherfuckers just rap and then the shit supposed to go the way it's supposed to go. Nah, they was click tight and that shit made sense. And they had a forefront person, everything was, everything made sense until niggas got cocky, you know? That's, you know how shit go. I ain't even gonna get into that. But, um, I feel like that's why it been made noise. It's a real movement. Just how DSD one was real. It was a movement. It wasn't just here I'm rapping and I got a manager and that's it. It was like a whole movement and it had lingo behind it. It had the niggas dressed differently. It's a whole thing, you know what I'm saying? So that shit sell. That's what the industry looks for. You know, it's like they look for that type of shit. So I feel like that's why it worked. That's why it shifted. You know, because we was like I said, we just DJs. We wasn't artists. We had maybe one or two artists, but like you know what I'm saying, we was really more so controlling shit from like a from from behind the scenes aspect. The motherfuckers was rapping, you know what I'm saying? Really being artists, so you know shit. If we were merging shit together, it could have been something bigger, you know what I'm saying? We could have been the ones pushing down. You don't ever know how shit would have went, you know what I'm saying? But that's how shit go, you know what I'm saying? I was rapping <laughs> shit and you just had to keep up with the pace and just you know, know what you had to bring to the table and just be aware of what's going on and be down to change, you know, be down to stay you but still, you know, accept what's going on and apply, you know, apply that same pressure. Where do you think the future of music is going? Man, it's, just, it's going in the direction that we make it, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it's it's a lot of genres of music, so you know what I'm saying? I feel like it's all, it's ever changing, ever growing. Um, so, you know, it's only gonna get better. I feel like music is better. It's more it's more stuff to listen to now than it was before. So, you know what I'm saying? There's more people with different messages now too, so I feel like it's only gonna get better. Yeah, um, also, uh, you're, I mean, as I said, as we started, you're one of the top producers. Yes, indeed. Oh, um, what What advice? Could you give to, to the young the young producer coming up? Um, brand um, yourself, you know what I'm saying? Know, and learn your business, brand yourself. Don't be afraid to leave that studio and network and meet people and get to know people and spread your brand around. A lot of people, studio producers get caught up in just being in the studio. and That's, that's just all the way cool, for sure. Perfect your craft, but don't be afraid to meet people and travel and, you know, you know, you sometimes you're gonna have to get beats for free and barter, you know, work your way up, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 a, it's a marathon and a sprint, so, you know, it's people ready to, ready to get it in, grind, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, brand yourself, that's the biggest thing, and learn the business all the way. Um, is there any, is there any, um, uh, 
uh, additional advice that you can give uh, that, that you can attest to? Because I, I know you just signed a deal with... Uh, yeah, read your contracts and take, and, and take yeah. time. Don't ever rush, don't rush no deals. I'm talking about my deal took like eight months to sign. We took a long time. We had come to Jesus meetings about this new life contract, all kinds of stuff. But, you know, it came out live. You know what I'm saying? It came out real dope. You know what I'm saying? But, like, take time. You know, make sure you just got a dope team around you. They can help you, you know, achieve those, you know what I'm saying? I got a dope team, I got a dope assistant, slash manager, I don't even know what to call her, just call us. She's a super woman, she's do everything, you know what I'm saying? So I got people like that, got solid, solid team, my day one niggas around me, you know what I'm saying? Got good artists, good producers, you know, the hit cartel, you know, just make sure you just got a dope, 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 dope foundation around you so you can just, you know, grind. Yes, that was where I was going with that yeah. next, the hit cartel. And all money and good money too, don't, don't sign, don't, don't take all money, bro. Please, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> Um, um, tell us a bit more about the Hit Cartel and yeah. what's and what's uh, who they are to you. And Man, it's like my, what you guys that's do. like my, you know, my my my, my production team. That's like my click. That's like my click producers. I think who just dope making noise individually. Like you know, two of them from Dallas, two of them one one's from Corpus Christi, and me and Esso, Esso we from Houston. So that's the team. You know what I'm saying? We got our artists, magic. Like I said, we pushing and pumping out. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, just focusing on. But like this is this is this an umbrella just producers a coalition of producers that's just sticking together. Like I said, we branded something. I feel like, you know, we got city go, we got from Texas, you know what I'm saying? I feel like this is it's stronger when we know we make it a movement. You know, brand he's like, man, who the fuck are these niggas? And he's doing this thing over here, he's doing this thing in LA, he's doing this thing in New York, he's doing this thing in Atlanta. That shit all come, you know, come together, you know what I'm saying? It's just it gets to be something bigger and beautiful, you know, so that's what I'm looking at, you know, it's just it's like my 808 mafia, but harder. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be hard, you know, so we're gonna come with it. Oh, there's no I'm sorry, there's no big big projects or anything on that. Right? Oh, we got the Hit Cartel issue. compilation coming out, but that's like in the fall, December. Like right now we're just working on getting places like we got shit with Young Thug on the way, we got shit with P and B Rock on the way, we got shit with Beaver on the way, we got shit with Nicki Minaj on the way, two chains. There's a lot of stuff going on the way. So but we just focus on getting them checks and getting them places right now and we just getting our name out there. And after that, you know, we're gonna come up with projects and CDs and tastes like that. I said the main project is coming out next from our team is him, his project, you know what I'm saying? From none to something coming soon. Hosted by Rich Kim, it's gonna be dope, it's gonna be a movie. You know what I'm saying? That, and um, like I said, the Hit Cartel Compilation tape in Year Genius 5, that's gonna come out, you know, at the end of the year too. So. Okay, so you guys got some, uh, a lot of good stuff, good stuff in yeah. store for us here. I'm here coming up. And um, then, uh, Plies and Currency. Okay, the Plies should happen on. Um, I was fucking with these people called Keys and Ink. Um, it's a production, like a production, like company. Really, really like a producer company. Like all they do is just you know, produce, put producers in, producers and they get placements and shit. So, I mean, it was really young chill that got me the placements with Plies. You know what I'm saying? Young chill always been, that's another dude that's been helping me out, you know what I'm saying, with my career since I started. He the dude that actually gave me my first major placement with the first major artist. And he's been consistently, you know, just helping me out, get my sound better, give me pointers, you know, just, you know, when I need shit, he always look out for me. So he good people, shout out to Young Chill, like he's in, you know, Wire Road Studio. But he's the one that got me that placement. I never met Plies in my life, so mm. I ain't gonna never lie and say I did that, but we constantly email shit and they pay for the beat, so it's a good relationship, it's a professional relationship for the most yeah. part. You know, with Currency, um, Rogers is the one that gave me that placement, shout out to Mr. Rogers, 937. He the one that gave me that placement because we was doing a lot of work together at the time. A lot of work. I think that's really actually during the starting five situation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's when he, and like I said, that's one thing I can say. Rogers helped a whole lot during that, the most. He actually helped the most. You know what I'm saying? High C not them so much, but me and High C cool now. Now, you know, K not so much, Q not so much. Now, I'm just being honest, I ain't gonna never bite my tongue. Because when I see my tongue, I'm the same shit, they know what it is. So, like, you know, they didn't really help. Like I say, Rogers helped the most, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The most. He the one gave me the placements. He called currency right then and there, like, we sent the beast to him. And he called him, double checked, backdoored, and everything. Like you know, he didn't have to do that shit. Like he, he the reason why me and Troy Lance got a good relationship. He the one we lived in. He stayed at this man crib for like three weeks, kicking it, learning wow. shit. You know what I'm saying? And niggas don't even know that shit. You know, learn a lot of shit. Just coming to nigga's house every day, learning shit, fucking with Rogers. That was a good ass experience too. So I fuck with Rogers because of that shit. But he the one that gave me that currency placement. It was crazy. I met currency. I had a broke down ass phone. I, had a, I, I, I said, I'm on a phone. Right? This, this a five. You know, they got seven now. But I had like I remember I had like a, um. Like one like a Nokia, like one of them like <laughs> like a remote. Yeah. <laughs> I was you know, I was going through hella shit, but I remember meeting that nigga like right when I used to get my number. Like, yeah, I wanna fuck with some more up to my currency. My phone died right there and I was like, so I never met currency again after that. Right. That's how shit go. I nigga he took my grinder too. I never got my grinder back from currency. <laughs> I think that's my favorite grind. This grind cost me forty dollars. So you yeah. see currency in the street. Yeah, if I see him present, you gonna ask him your grinder back. Yeah, I need that whole bag. And I know it's long gone in a, in a pile full of grinders at your house, but just give me one of those. You got at your house, give me one diamond grinders or something, sponsor grinders, jet grinder. Um, my next question. Uh, early on, you were heavily um, affiliated with Live and Direct. Yeah. And and later on, you had a slight management shift when you linked up with. Uh, I'm gonna start in five. 
Oh, that was so short. Yeah, yeah. That was like like can you speak to man, the experience you had. The worst the decision we ever made. Yeah. And that really was a learning experience. Everything I went through was a learning experience. You know what I'm saying? That just taught me not to sign nothing local. And yeah. don't get down with that local do it yourself. Cause a lot of stuff they did, you know what I'm saying, they had good intentions, but they was arguing amongst themselves. Right. And they couldn't do that's right because they was arguing amongst themselves. So it was just really just a learning experience. Like I said, don't rush into shit. And that was really a decision or you know, I was on number. I didn't really make a decision to make that move. It was, it was two to three, you know what I'm saying? Just to let people know. Right. But you know, I had to go, you know, what my niggas wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? We got what they, they, they got what they thought they got out of it, but for the most part, it really wasn't nothing that we could do for ourselves. And that's really what I learned. Last year they did, we could do for ourselves. You know, that's just period. People try to fool you, make sure that, you know, try to be like the middleman to a lot of shit that you can just like, look up and just research and just learn and do yourself. Do it yourself. That's learn to be your own middleman. Or just, you know, yeah. put your nigga on. You know, your people gonna, people who really love you and care, they're gonna work hard for you versus a nigga who just coming up trying to just look at you as a come up. So, Speaking to that, are there any, um, any decisions outside of that that you've made within the industry that you wish you wouldn't have done that I mean, you think would have just would have just, just 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 trust the people too quickly you know what I'm saying I feel that's my biggest I got a big heart bro and I'm I got really I'm really loyal and I really base everything I'll, I'll, I'll base you I'll base your shit I'll base my like friendship with you past work ethic just based off loyalty you don't got to work around me as long as you just loyal you down I'll keep you around that's my biggest problem like I get blinded by loyalty you know what I'm saying? And like, you know what I'm saying? And the motherfucker be around me that ain't doing nothing, just slowing me down. So that, that's been my biggest problem, being blinded by loyalty. You know what I'm saying? Don't get blinded by loyalty, you know what I'm saying? In the um, music business though, is that is that really possible to... To, to, to avoid? Yeah. No, you, 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 you yeah. gonna go through it. It's like, it's like you know what I'm saying? Like, you, when you drive a car, you gonna get into a wreck, you gonna get into a fender, but you gonna mess up, bro. You ain't yeah. nothing perfect. So it's the same thing with the music shit, you know? But you just gotta learn from it. Motherfuckers don't learn from it. That'd be the thing. The you know, motherfucker bump his head and keep bumping his head. Man, that was some shit I, I hate speaking on because that was a situation that like that was really fucked up. And like I said, I learned from the situation. Like that's why I hate emailing shit. I emailed the beat and it got remade. You know what I'm saying? I got fucked on that deal. You know what I'm saying? I signed some shit hella quick. They finessed me and I, you know, I got finessed on that deal. But they ain't up getting finessed on that. They ain't about fifty cents. So that's just how shit go. That's what, that's what the beat it up shit. That was a fucked up situation. I hate talking about this shit because that was just a fucked up situation. But God, you know, God do everything for a reason. I learned from the situation and you know, moved on. So, um, did you ever end up able to get the uh, from the credit for the song or it's yeah, still? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, that was like I was like 17, bro, 18, wow. went hella fast, and that was, that was just a bad move. Wow. That's how I learned from that shit. Wow. That shit really like made me. That's the situation that made me get hella stiff because I was hella young. Hell yeah, I was younger than this nigga, this nigga 21. I'm, I was like 17, 18. I didn't just turn 18 when I did that shit. So that's one of the lessons that, yeah. that you, that you, that you had to learn, 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 learn the shit, hard bro. way. And niggas don't know I did that shit. This is a lesson I'm going for. So um, I kind of want to uh, kind of ask for, for those who, who might not be familiar with um, who June James is mm -hmm. as a person, as a producer. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are as June James? person and as man i'm producer. really boring as hell i just like making beats i swear to god i smoke a lot of weed <laughs> that's all I'm, I'm really just with the shit i like i like smoking weed and making beats i'm really boring other than that that's all i do i don't do no long walks on the beach or none of that shit you know what i'm saying we just smoke a lot of weed we make a lot of music it is fun because i do what i like i already love what i do already so i can't really say what else i am like you see what i am that's the thing about me like i am what i am you know what i'm saying this is what i do what you see is what i am so that's what it is Beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, so um, I kind of want to end, end with just saying that um, you're um, just locals like you who, who come from come from Houston to kind of blow up to to be what you are today. Yeah. It's a real um, inspiration for people real like talk. me trying to come up in yeah. the game. It's sitting right next to me right now. So I just want to say. That's real. Thank you. Thank Man, you for, thank you for yeah. having me, though. Yeah, you, 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 you got fuck with yes. fuck with you. I appreciate you yes. reaching out and fuck with me. That's yes. love, bro. Absolutely. I always Absolutely. fuck with that shit. Thank you. I keep doing y'all things. Oh, yes. Oh, it's good. Where's your boy, June James, checking in the Hodge producer in the great state of Texas? Shout out to the Hit Cartel. Shout out to Houston. Shout out to Eggers Homes. We're in the building. Pow. TIG, right?